Joining us now is one of the top broadcasters in the sports world today. Notre Dame fans will know him as NBC's lead voice for Notre Dame football, Mike Tirico. Mike, welcome to Notre Dame Day. Well, Emily, good to be with you all. I can't help you with any architecture or how, how we uh, teach architecture along the way, but those of us in the toy department over here in sports, are great. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be a part of this Notre Dame Day with you all. Well, it's so great to have you, and your knowledge and expertise is going to come in handy uh, educating us on the fighting Irish uh, right now. They're coming off a very successful season. Unfortunately, yeah. they lose their winningest QB of all time, four members of one of the best O-lines in the country, and their two most productive wide receivers. Why should Notre Dame fans be optimistic about the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, rebuild, right? It is the uh, benchmark of college football and sports in general, really. Can you come back and repeat it and that's where that uh, success has become so difficult to maintain because I think the entirety of the sport has gotten so much more uh, productive and ability to play at a championship level is not just an exclusive domain of four or five schools there are 25 or 30 that can play at a high level even though we keep seeing the Alabamas the Clemsons and now Notre Dame in the college football playoff on a regular basis uh, for me it is the structure that has been built over the last couple of years uh, we, we were wondering when Quentin Nelson and Mike McGlinchey were gone, well, who's going to replace them on the Notre Dame offensive line? And as you said, we could be looking at four players who will be drafted uh, in a pretty high number in the NFL draft coming up here in a week and a half or so. So there's very solid people in the pipeline. Obviously, the quarterback position will play out. Uh, you have a couple of people there who've been around campus. Jack Cohn, who transfers in uh, from the Big Ten, plus skill players who have been around the program. And I think that is where... I'm looking forward to seeing the growth of Notre Dame. I feel like the freshmen, the sophomores who are coming in are really coming to a level to compete at an earlier spot right now. And I think we're going to see some of the names that have been around campus starring on the field on Saturday afternoons. All right, let's talk about the defense. The Notre Dame defense has a new leader in Marcus Freeman. They'll be without their Buckus Award-winning linebacker, a couple of defensive ends heading to the NFL, and two <laughs> veteran defensive backs. What excites you about Freeman being in charge, and do you expect the defense to con continue their dominant ways? Good questions. Kyle Hamilton's there, and that uh, is a star who I think we're all excited to see from the very first snap he played at Notre Dame Stadium, which turned into a pick six uh, in his second game in college football. So we know that he can be a star player. And you mentioned Marcus Freeman, the defensive coordinator, who comes over from Cincinnati, helped that Cincinnati team with great success going on to a New Year's Six Bowl game, and the defense that played really well. Terrific recruiter, uh, terrific coach. Clark Lee did a heck of a job with the Notre Dame defense, but I don't expect much of a drop-off, even though there are some names that are gone. A name like Drew White will still be there. There will be some new names up front, but we have seen steady pressure on the quarterback over the last four or five years, and I think that will be a hallmark of this defense as well. Overall, in the last four or five years, I think we've seen the skill level, the physical nature, and the quality of the play increase play, player to player up and down that roster, and I think that's why you're now watching Notre Dame just reload with the next set of guys ready to step on the field. And we're coming off a unique year in sports, really a unique year across the world. But, of course, empty stadiums. NBC's broadcast of Notre Dame's home game versus Clemson was, I believe, the most watched regular season game in college football. Why do you believe Notre Dame football is such a strong TV draw? And what will you remember most about covering that particular game? Well, I'll start with the second question first. Just right off shot here, uh, I've got a picture of the fans coming on the field at the end of the 47-40 to 40 double overtime game against Clemson. What, what a night in a stadium that's seen so many historic moments to see a number one team uh, come in there in an epic game. What a terrific double overtime game, back and forth. So many great plays made. It's been fun to watch that back a little bit at different times and highlights here this year. Boy, did we miss all the fans being there. But I will say that the students being a part of those games and the faculty and the staff I think that really gave us a more of an atmosphere in South Bend than we had in most of the venues where we watch sports. And to your first question, why is Notre Dame endure as one of those uh, television so rock solid performers? It's the consistency of not just the football program, but the university. It's rare to have a national brand in this day and age of regionalization and you know, everything's your own individualized view of the world through your phone. Notre Dame football still resonates around the world and around the country. And alums get up in Southern California on late Saturday mornings. 
They make the pilgrimage to South Bend. They watch in Florida, and Boston, and all across the country. There are very few programs that have maintained that national scope and feel. Some come on the radar, then they go away. Notre Dame has endured. I think it's the principles of the university, the quality of the program, and the players who they turn out. I'll just say this about visiting with players in college football and pro football, and I've done that in meetings for 25 years. The quality of the Notre Dame players stands out amongst all the players we sit and talk to in terms of the individuals. My favorite question to every Notre Dame player we speak to, usually on a Friday before a home game, is what's your favorite class and why? And they will tell us some very interesting things about their academic uh, endeavors. And when people scoff at the term student athlete, I embrace it because I see it firsthand with the Notre Dame kids. They are truly student athletes and those young men and the women who play on the women's teams at Notre Dame uh, truly represent the university in a way that I think all Irish alums should be very, very proud of. And you'll be breaking in a new broadcast partner for Notre Dame football this fall. Of course, Drew Brees, who my partner here at Vahid had the opportunity yeah. to interview yesterday. What do you think Drew will bring to the Notre Dame broadcast and what type of preparation will take place with you and Drew prior to the first game? Yeah, for sure. We'll do a couple of practice games, which is normal uh, when you have a new broadcast partner. So we'll uh, get Drew a chance before he gets on the air to understand the mechanics of broadcasting a game and all of those elements that come with it. But look, you're going to bring to the booth uh, as great a mind that has played the quarterback position at the highest level in the world for the last 20 years. And I think for Notre Dame fans, what's cool is you can have Drew Brees on your campus and uh, around the football program and Coach Kelly and Tommy Reese, and Marcus Freeman, and some of the players. What a great opportunity that is, which speaks to the value of having a national broadcast package with an announcer like Drew Brees to cover Notre Dame's uh, home games. I'm sure it will bring uh, a balanced broadcast in week two of the home schedule when Purdue comes, because Drew, of course, played at Purdue. But we spent some time together in Southern California this past week, and I know he is excited to get to campus, see what Notre Dame football Saturdays are like, and to really enjoy the experience. I've told him, as I told Tony Dungy last year, and it, it was true, uh, there are very few experiences like that in sports. To go to that stadium, that campus, on home football weekends, I just uh, hope that with the good uh, mask wearing and inoculations that people have been receiving that we'll have a chance to have a full stadium or something close to it one more time because boy did we miss that on Saturdays I missed hearing the band and seeing the folks and the tailgating and all that and just fingers crossed we get back to that in the fall and you know Drew and I and everyone else will have those uh, memorable experiences that are Notre Dame football Saturdays on NBC. Yeah, definitely fingers crossed that'll happen. You've got a slate of seven Notre Dame games this season on NBC. What games are you looking forward to most on the 2021 schedule? Well, USC is on the schedule, so there's the answer there, right? Uh, one of the great intersectional rivalries in the history of college football, USC and Notre Dame enduring over the years. North Carolina comes in the very next week. That'll be a tough game. I'm looking at the home schedule this way. There are three games in a four-week stretch. And then after a couple of weeks off, there are four games in a five-week stretch. And that, that back stretch is pretty interesting. I mentioned USC. I mentioned North Carolina. Good game that the Irish played in Chapel Hill last year. And then there's the Navy game. You know, that, that is so special. The, the roots of it, the institutions have such great meaning uh, to one another because of the history that goes back to the war. And uh, we missed Navy Notre Dame last year. Now, that's one of those uh, rituals of fall that I think we missed in our normal life. And to see the, uh, the midshipmen make the trip up, they have such respect for Notre Dame. They love coming to play. And Coach Kelly and those players who have played against them will tell you, you know, the score may not be the most even score from year to year because of Notre Dame being a better team, but the effort is unmatched and the quality in the class. And when you see the Notre Dame players come down as Navy's alma mater gets played and then the Navy kids come back down, listen to Notre Dame's uh, end song, cheer, cheer for old Notre Dame, listen to the alma mater. Um, those are special moments in college football. And to be able to see those year after year are the enduring things that make college football special to all of us. So those are just a couple of the games I'm looking forward to. But, hey, every Saturday in South Bend is pretty good. I wish there were 17, not seven, but uh, we'll make the most of the seven this year for sure. <laughs>
Yeah, I know everyone here at Notre Dame and in South Bend is really looking forward to this fall season. Uh, one more question for you before we wrap up, sure. Mike. It's just been reported that you'll host the Olympics primetime coverage in Tokyo this summer. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Tell us about how that'll work and when do you leave? Yeah, well, uh, it'll be my second primetime uh, Olympic hosting role. And it's such an honor. You can see the great value that I have from the first one. I've got a nice pillow from Pyeongchang in 2018 <laughs> in South Korea. Uh, look, the Olympics are something special. We've had many Notre Dame athletes compete in the Olympics. Hopefully, we'll see some more this time around. The Olympics do bring the world together. And in a time when the world has been so separated, not just the world, but cities and communities and families, uh, hopefully by the summertime in Tokyo, we'll have the first event that will be a global gathering uh, that shows us that we can have a world with a new normal. There'll be challenges ahead and potholes on the road between now and Tokyo, but we're all hopeful we'll get there. I'll probably leave sometime early in July. The opening ceremony is July 23rd. It's 17 nights of the greatest athletes in the world who had their dream delayed. They wanted to do this last year. Uh, but hopefully if the games come off on schedule, it'll be a dream delayed, not denied. And we'll see that once or twice in a lifetime moment for the Olympians to compete. People like Simone Biles and Katie Ledecky, some of the greatest athletes ever in their sport and the great Team USA performances, whether it's soccer or water polo or volleyball or women's basketball or the dream team. There's so many exciting elements to it that uh, we just can't wait. Matter of fact, just before this call, we were on a call talking about the first four nights of the Olympics, and we're going to do that for the next few days. So the planning is going full speed, and we hope to be in Tokyo and folks can share a summertime memory or two with us from July 23rd on through the second week in August. Well, we're very excited to join you for that. And then again in the fall for Notre Dame football. Mike, thank you so much for joining us and being a part of Notre Dame Day. My pleasure. Congratulations to you all. And it's been great to be associated through this TV experience for me with Notre Dame. I'm a Syracuse alum. Proud that I have another ACC place that I can call home. And we wish all the Irish uh, nation out there the absolute best and good health here. And we'll see you in the stadium in the fall for sure. Sounds great, Mike. Thanks again.